hey guess what uh as start over hey guys welcome back to the channel uh guess what i have in store for you now that's right got a new little toy here i'm going to go ahead and try to tune this is actually a gas carburetor as you already know i run a methanol carburetor in my car it's it's a uh, 750 double pumper uh this is another 750 on gas um going to try something different i'm going to switch it over the gas and see what it does a lot of people think it will slow down some people will think of speed up uh if you think you know what it's going to do save my channel i like to get your kind of opinion or opinion on what do you think it would do but uh but what i'm going to do i'm going to stick that carburetor okay up on my car and see what it does uh as you know it's an ls six liter motor 243 heads nothing special pretty good size big cam at brian Tooley stage five cam that's in it um so nothing really special about the motor by no means but uh i want to see what it does um i know what it runs now in the eighth mile um uh, runs about good weather runs about 680s uh we're gonna see if it runs about the same so the plans are to get this thing installed on my car and go out and test and tune not this weekend today's friday so next friday i'm planning going out the track and see what it does so stay tuned for more on okay, that. Here's the carburetor up pretty close. This is the specs that's on it and stuff of what came loaded. But uh, that's not what I'm going to run. Uh, I've been doing a lot of research for the gas setups, what primary and secondary jets, all that good stuff, squirter size, all that stuff. I'm going to throw something totally different at it, set up more specific for the LS uh, motor that I have. It's just going to be a stab in the dark to see if it works. But uh, the first thing we can do is uh get the jets changed get all that stuff changed put it in the car fire it up and see go from there i'm going to run 93 octane gas through this so it's going to be basically a pump gas motor compression this thing's not really high it's maybe 10 and a half to one so it's not really a high compression motor but 93 should be should be adequate enough for our testing stuff what we need to do with it so uh but anyway yeah it's not a, it's not a no i mean it's nothing special about this carburetor uh got it for a really really good deal so uh but anyway uh we're gonna go ahead and try to get this thing installed or set up first and all that good stuff and so anyway that's what the plans are uh we're gonna get it installed and test it out so more of that to come. okay a little bit more close up on this carburetor uh like i said this is a pro form 750 uh it's a pretty nice carburetor for the money you really can't go wrong with it um, I have a Proform body exactly like this one on my uh, uh, methanol carburetor. Uh, it's almost identical bowls that's on it, almost identical link each. Uh, it's almost identical for everything. Mine has a little bit different meter blocks on it because mine's an alcohol and have a little bit different base plate on it as well. But uh, it's still a, a uh, for a uh, uh, same base plate that's probably for the alcohol for that. It just looks, mine's anodized black or something like that but the meter blocks is probably the biggest difference between the two so uh other than that let's get these things opened up then show you what they look like okay let's go ahead and get this opened up um it's the first time i have opened it um let's take a look what they have inside of it sometimes these things stick on the back end of it because they haven't been opened um little tap on it wow um uh-huh there we go i think it's that gasket that's stuck to it or you don't want to prevent from there we go there. don't be afraid that you're not going to hurt it but uh, this gasket here was stuck on the end of this guy here pretty heavily so as you can see i did not tear any of that stuff took a hammer just to persuade just a little bit but anyway this is the rear bowl section it's got the jet extensions on it which is pretty cool uh they, they screw in here or the jet screws in here 
uh, you'll notice when I get my alcohol out, my alcohol, you see, it looks almost twice as big as this. So anyway, this is the end. It does, it is plugged on the back for the power valve. Uh, there is none in here. It's actually, it's blocked off. So we don't have to worry about that on there. Uh, messing that up. I mean, you know, messing up and stuff. So anyway, let's go ahead and get the other side done. go <laughs> uh came off uh stuck on there once again um there we go this we can tell has a power valve on it i will be changing this out as well and there's your uh primary jets on it so uh once again uh it's uh all set up ready to go it's uh ready to go so anyway um go ahead and uh, we'll get all this ta stuff taken off and see if we can get to this power valve here behind it and stuff like that we're gonna get this taken off this like the other to get the bowl off it's really really stuck on there pretty good I got the rear one off as well the meter plate uh, it actually has a plug in it so it does not have any of the same way uh, kind of a little more information on the base plate what's different between mine and this it has provisions for um uh, vacuum ports up on the front as well as in the rear so um so anyway that's mine it does not have that at all i have no vacuum ports on my base plate so anyway the other things that that needs to be checked as well is is on the top um the bleed jets we're going to back all these out blow air make sure there's no metal that's it that's actually in here and stuff make sure everything's good and clean um so uh, we'll blow air through everything just to make sure there's no metal shavings any of that good stuff that's another good tip same way with squirters we'll take those out clean those out make sure there's nothing in those as well i don't know if you can see this or not this is the reason why you blow things out and you can see i don't know if you can see it or not but right in here is a piece of metal that's actually flaked off so that squirter where it got plugged if you wouldn't have took this thing, if I wouldn't have took this thing apart and clean this out, but there's definitely, I'll, I haven't blown it out yet, but I'll go ahead and pull this piece of metal on and I'll show you what I'm, what I'm looking at. Okay. Okay. When you take the squirters out, you have these little needles in here. They actually go down like this. So on the top of it, I don't know if you can see it or not. See that little, these little metal shavings. You can see that or not, but uh, yeah, that's good, good. But anyway, you can see a metal shaving here, here, here. All this stuff was in actually sitting on the top of this needle. That's why it's best to take this thing apart, blow all through the passages, make sure you get remove all this metal. If not, that could have been a bad stumble. But anyway, it's all taken care of now. But uh, that's the reason why you take these things apart and you blow them out. So. I know it's new, but you got to do it. So I blew air through all the passages. Um, basically, just take an air nozzle and try to blow it in all these holes that you see here. Go through it. You hit each one, blow a lot of air through it, make sure there's no restrictions whatsoever. Uh, do that to both sides. The uh, the front and the back has the same amount of holes on it, both sides. Uh, just blow a lot of air through it. Okay, to make sure you got everything cleaned out, blow it over one more time to make sure you got everything cleaned out. Then once you get it all cleaned out, stick to your idle rear restrictions. You might want to just glance through these just to make sure they're good and clear. But once you feel like they're good and clear, you can see it. Sometimes you can take like, like a piece of small wire or something like that, or you just visually look through the light and stuff. You see it, it's good, then just screw them back in and you're good to go. Uh, same way with these guys here, the squirters. Make sure there's no restrictions on it whatsoever. You can see a good clean hole through it. Don't see anything plugged in it. Go ahead and put those back on. So you should be good to go with those as well. Uh, same way with the uh, uh, the bolts that holds it down. Make sure they're good and clean as well. So once you get all that in, just put everything back together and then we'll go ahead and put the bolts on. So that's the next step. All the bolts are back on. Uh, the bolts are tightened up and stuff. Um, we'll get it installed on the car. We'll check for leaks, make sure there's nothing leaking from the bowls or from the gaskets, any of that good stuff. 
when we when he uh, put the fuel pump on. So we'll be, we'll be able to check to see if it's leaking. Also, we'll be able to adjust the uh, floats as well. So it makes it handy for these sight glasses and stuff so we can see where it's at. Um, okay, when adjusting these guys here, I noticed on this one, this thing was really ratcheted down. So it had a lot of pressure on here. In fact, it was actually pushing on the pump a little bit. What that could do if you get too much downward pressure when you go on the throttle with it, it could override the lever and actually push into the pump and do possible damage. But anyway, the best way to do it is just go ahead and tighten the screw down, which I know it's kind of backwards, but you tighten it down, that actually shrinks the spring. So it gets you some play. As you can notice here, there's a little play on it now. Okay, not a lot, but there's just a little play. What you like to do is take that play out of it. So you just kind of kind of back off on the nut and just kind of check it, you know, and uh, uh, just get it enough to where it just barely touches, barely play in it now. I mean, in fact, it's hardly any play, but you just want it just barely touching. Um, then when you, you know, go full throttle and it pushes on lever. So, okay. So the last thing I did, I adjusted the, uh, uh, the cam levers uh for the the, the squirters so adjust for those got those right where we need them at the idle air is the other thing that you got to adjust for um one and a half turns is what uh, i'm going to start off with and we'll go from there when i checked it raw off the bat is like a quarter now about half to three quarter turn in so basically all we did or i did is uh you just turn this in till it bottoms out you know, there's not a lot of pressure, just barely where it touches. Then you turn it off one and a half turns out. I did that on all four corners. So uh, that was the last the last adjustment I did. Uh, then I went ahead and installed my uh, fuel log on it. So uh, so we just have to connect the fuel line to it. The fuel pressure goes up to my, uh, you know, it goes up to the fuel pressure. So all this in, installed in the car, fire up the fuel pump, check for leaks, make sure there's nothing leaking. Everything's not leaking then uh, we'll fire it up anyway so the next thing we have to do is get this sucker installed uh, i got to change the plugs that's on the car got to do that real quick but after i do that put this thing on the car uh, add some fuel to it and start it up to see what we got so anyway um, that's it for now um, then uh, the next uh, video part you see is me getting it installed on the car and see it running so if you do like what you see uh, please go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. So uh, hopefully this is very informative uh, for people who just bought a new car and stuff and what to do, how to get things set up. But for right now, we we'll go with that. Then the next videos will me putting it on the car, getting it started, uh, and check the air fuel ratio, the uh, all that good stuff to make sure it's sitting there running idling just perfect. So anyway, uh, more of that to come anyway. So other than that, see you next time.